Colin Phillips here, along with Mike Gavin and Warren Manning, with part two of the introduction to focused cardiac ultrasound. So um, today uh, we'll mostly be looking at the standard views, um, full views, what you would get if you ordered a full um, uh, cardiac ultrasound uh, and doing it with the um, handheld uh, uh, unit. Uh, we'll go over some resources and again finish up with example diagnoses. So as a review, um, uh, these are all the standard views that you can get. Um, uh, we like to start with the parasternal long, starting with the subcostal is also acceptable. Um, today we'll look at the parasternal short, apical four chamber, and associated uh, views, uh, and also the IVC, uh, which we hinted at last time. Um, here are the different uh, chambers that you uh, get in the different orientations uh, with each of these views. So again, as a reminder, uh, th thoracic uh, 3D anatomy, right ventricle is anterior ventricle, long axis of the heart is in this orientation with the base apex uh, uh, pointing off towards the um, right shoulder. So when you obtain the parasternal long, you're coming here on dot number three, third, fourth interspace, markers pointing off to the right shoulder, uh, left ventricle, left atrium, aorta, putting the aortic valve and mitral valve in the same view. Um, and your markers off to the left of the screen, uh, or, or left of the patient, right of the screen, opposite from all other ultrasound imaging mitral and aortic valve in the same view, anterior septum for lateral walls, and the pericardium. So, uh, as an excursion from what we were doing last time, when you're on the parasternal long axis view, you can tilt your probe down, meaning bringing the tail down towards the left shoulder. As you do that, your scanning uh, fan is moving more anterior, and you are opening up the right ventricle and right atrium. Here's a little part of the left ventricle, left uh, tricuspid valve. As you tip even further, uh, you completely lose your left ventricle. You're now anterior. You've got your right atrium, right ventricle, and tricuspid valve here. Rotating the probe from the parasternal long axis 90 degrees clockwise, so instead of the marker pointing off to the right shoulder, the marker's now off to the left. You're here along uh, the short axis of the heart, uh, and uh, you can get a view of the heart um, uh, as a donut. So this is helpful with wall motion abnormalities, uh, and as I like to call it, is the donut view. So when you're in the parasternal short axis, uh, you can tip the probe to get apical views, views along the papillary muscle, mitral valve views, and then uh, the coup de gras um, basal level view where you can see the tricuspid valve, pulmonic valve, and aortic valve on FOSS with the right atrium, uh, pulmonic arteries or pulmonary arteries, and right ventricular outflow tract. Um, and here are some examples of each. So, uh, short axis level of mitral valve, here's your mitral valve opening and closing, and then here, a little bit further basally, aortic valve, three leaflets, tricuspid and pulmonic valves. As you're in this, the marker's pointing off in this direction. Uh, be careful when you're doing these views to not be off axis. Uh, now, apical views, uh, we've moved from uh, up here down to the apex of the heart, markers off to the axilla. Instead of pointing off this way, you're down here now. Uh, note this is a full echo given the ECG leads that are present. Uh, and the patient's comfortably in the left lateral decubitus position. So in the apical four chamber view, um, you open up left ventricle, left atrium, right ventricle, right atrium. Uh, this is, of course, the inferior septum, anterior lateral wall. Inferior septum because it's uh, not, uh, there's no aortic valve in the view. Aortic valve is anterior septum, so what's not the anterior septum has to be the inferior septum. And just like the 
anterior septum is uh, across from the inferior lateral wall. The inferior septum is across from the anterior lateral wall. Turning the probe from the axilla down towards the bed, uh, you can open up the fifth chamber of the heart, which is the aorta. So here's left ventricle, aorta, aortic valve, left atrium, uh, right ventricle, right atrium. And here it is, a uh, uh, cartoon of it. Now that the aorta is in view, this is the anterior septum, inferior lateral wall. So then once you've rotated out towards the bed, you come rotating back across where you were the apical four. You can get the apical two chamber view. Uh, you get the inferior wall, anterior wall, uh, and a view of the left atrium, left ventricle, left ventricle, left atrium. Rotating even further, so all this, by the way, is done with the patient in the left lateral decubitus. You are simply rotating the probe along here. You can bring out the apical three chamber view. Uh, left ventricle, left atrium, aorta, aortic valve, uh, mitral valve. This uh, should ring a bell as similar to the peristernal long axis. It's basically the same thing, just from a different orientation. Instead of being up here in spot three, you're down in spot five at the apex. So the apex is what you see first. Um, but it's all the same walls, uh, same view. So to review, um, two chamber is anterior and inferior walls, anterior and inferior, with the marker pointing uh, up. The uh, apical three-chamber view has the anterior septum and uh, the inferior lateral wall. Uh, and then the apical four-chamber view uh, has the inferior septum, anterior lateral wall, with the marker pointing down towards the axilla. And although it's cut off here in the, the video, it should say Fagenbaum's, uh, which is where I'm getting all these images from. Um, and again, reminder, anterior septum contains the aorta. So review from last time, the subcostal view, using your overhand grip, mark it towards the right, come underneath the ribs, uh, opening up the heart. Um, uh, of course, you are seeing first the right ventricle, right atrium, left ventricle, left atrium. And uh, do not be fooled, this is the liver, not a large effusion. Pericardium, you can see, is along here. Quick word about the IVC. Um, uh, you can estimate the right atrial filling pressure based on what the IVC is doing. Um, it's probably most sensitive in seeing uh, a very collapsed IVC and not a dilated IVC. There's a couple reasons why you could have a dilated IVC, including being intubated. Uh, things like that. But you can take a guess uh, or a rough estimate as far as what the right atrial filling pressures are based on what your IVC is doing. If it's totally pancake flat um, and collapses when you're breathing, uh, you probably have a low filling pressure. If it's somewhere in the middle, be it either dilated or collapsing, one or the other, you're in the 5 to 10 range. And if it's dilated and not collapsing, you're in the greater than 15 millimeters of mercury range. Quick word about color Doppler as well. Um, you can add this on to visualize direction of the blood flow. Red means it's coming towards you. Blue means it's going away. But um, aliasing can happen and the coloring can uh, change. What's more important is about when in the cardiac cycle the blood flow is happening. Uh, uh, and that will give you a sense of whether there's um, regurgitation happening or not. And this is uh, equivalent to hearing a murmur. You have to think, should blood actually be going in that direction during that phase of the cardiac cycle? It's a subjective uh, scale, um, rated 1 to 4. Uh, and again, we mentioned it in the last lecture, for example, mitral regurgitation doesn't actually matter how far back uh, the regurgitation goes. It's actually how thick the um, uh, uh, regurgitant jet is at the level of the valve. Um, but for all intents and purposes, when you cannot do post hoc measurements, uh, a subjective uh, decision about how uh, much regurgitation there will suffice. So again, here are your views, uh, peristernal long, peristernal short, rotating 90 degrees. Out of the apex, you can rotate around, get different views from the five chamber all the way up to the three chamber views. Uh, and then down here, um, subcostal long axis and subcostal IVC views, just rotating 90 degrees amongst each other. Um, you can use a reporting sheet to keep track of um, uh, 
what your findings are, uh, and uh, that's from the uh, um, consensus document uh, from uh, Journal of American Society of Echocard RFE 2013. So a couple quick resources online. There's, of course, the American Institute of Ultrasound and Medicine Meta Portal, uh, Society of Ultrasound and Medical Education, uh, Ultrasound Corner Chest, uh, which has great um, uh, monthly uh, challenge cases uh, with uh, example uh, images that were obtained at the point of care. Um, the Meded portal has a series of point of care ultrasound uh, resources for critical care. And then a quick uh, shameless self-promotion uh, if you're interested in uh, some light reading uh, first-hand experience of using the handheld ultrasound at the bedside uh, during my uh, medical residency. So a couple of example diagnoses, a uh, 66-year-old gentleman uh, who's presenting with acute dyspnea. Same questions as last time, what's a view, which walls, and what is wrong? So uh, even though we're jumping right into the uh, color Doppler, um, you can see here the left ventricle. Uh, right ventricle is kind of off the screen and just not fitting. Uh, you got your aortic flow coming up this way, you can see the aortic valve coming in and the mitral valve. And during systole, even though we don't have the ECG gating, you can tell blood is flowing backwards. Coming at it from a different view, uh, here's your inferior wall, anterior wall, so apical two-chamber view. Uh, blood is regurgitating back into the left atrium during uh, systole. Uh, and you can see the uh, thickness of the actual jet itself is uh, moderately wide, so 2, 3 plus mitral regurgitation. So what's the view? Apical 5, apical 2 chamber with color Doppler, anterior septum, inferior lateral in the apical 5, the anterior inferior in the apical 2, and then uh, given this hint of wall motion abnormalities in the uh, inferior wall and tethering of the mitral valve, um, this turned out to be ischemic mitral regurgitation. So this is a case of a 32-year-old gentleman who uh, presented uh, with progressive dyspnea. Um, what's the view? Uh, which walls are shown? What's wrong? And then what does the Doppler show? So review from last time, parasternal long axis view, big dilated left ventricle, you get, you've increased your scanning depth, left atrium, mitral valve, aortic valve. And then when we put color Doppler on, uh, even though it's not showing out great, uh, during diastole there is filling, um, try to play again here, uh, filling the left ventricle across the aortic valve, so uh, aortic insufficiency. Uh, this gentleman ended up having a bicuspid aortic valve um, and a dilated aorta and required surgical repair. So parasternal along, anterior septum for lateral walls, dilated left ventricle, and aortic regurgitation. So here's a 45-year-old gentleman who presented with shortness of breath. Same questions. So apical four-chamber view, um, left ventricle, right ventricle, right atrium, left atrium. A little off-axis, we're not getting the mitral valve like we should, but it's off-axis to help show this large uh, uh, inferior septal thrombus. Uh, you can also appreciate the ejection fraction itself is uh, depressed. So what's the view? A four chambers, a little off axis, inferior septum, anterior lateral wall. Um, uh, inferior septum, of course, because the aortic valve wasn't there. And then what's wrong? LV thrombus on inferior septum. So this is a 55-year-old woman uh, who presented uh, with shortness of breath in the setting of uh, known lung cancer. Uh, and what's the view and what's wrong? or what are the views, because there are a couple coming up here. Uh, and notice it's a full echo with the ECG leads coming off. So here you got your ECG leads with gating. So this is a parasternal long axis view, uh, right ventricular outflow tract, left ventricle, mitral valve, aortic valve. Uh, and then we'll take a closer look at this in a second here out in the apical five chamber view, left ventricle, left atrium, aortic valve, right ventricle, sorry, aorta, aortic valve, right ventricle, right atrium, 
And again, big space along here with the heart rocking back and forth. And a third view uh, through the liver here, uh, very large pericardial fusion with some evidence of uh, tamponade physiology, collapse of the uh, um, right ventricle radiation during diastole. So we talked about all views, uh, large pericardial fusion with tamponade physiology. Uh, she was tapped uh, and with relief of her hypertension and um, dyspnea. So this is a 90-year-old gentleman uh, that I actually saw on medicine consults uh, who had abdominal pain. What's the view? What's wrong? A little bit of a trick question here. I'll say I was trying to get the IVC uh, when I did this view and ended up seeing this instead. This is a very dilated abdominal aorta, which explains the belly pain. Um, the depth, you know, we're talking almost 8, 9, 10 centimeters depth, um, top to bottom, across. It's a very large abdominal aortic aneurysm. Here's a case of a 46-year-old woman with strep throat as a child um, who now is presenting with dyspnea. So what's the view and what's wrong? So peristernal long axis view, left atrium, left ventricle. Aortic valve is off the screen. Um, here's your uh, mitral valve opening. Mitral valve doesn't look totally normal. Little color Doppler put on top. During systole, you can see regurgitant jet back into the left atrium, as we saw in the earlier case. So uh, perishing along with Doppler, what's wrong? Mitral regurgitation. And the mitral valve can be said to have looked like a hockey stick, which is consistent with a rheumatic uh, uh, changes on the mitral valve, uh, so rheumatic MR. This is a patient with a uh, core valve procedure a couple days prior, 96-year-old woman who had a blood pressure of 80 over 30. Um, so we were called to evaluate and see what, what was going on with her. So what's the view, where is the core valve, and what is wrong? So uh, subcostal view, left ventricle, right ventricle. Here's your core valve here, um, uh, and it looks like it's in the right spot uh, along the aorta, uh, or where the old aortic valve would have been. Here's your liver. And so uh, looking with the color Doppler for uh, aortic regurgitation, uh, really not much. The valve looks to be looking working well. Um, so subcostal view, where's the core valve, where it should be, what's wrong. Turns out she ended up having sepsis, not aortic regurgitation. I was explaining her hypotension. So that ends the uh, series of two lectures. Um, uh, hopefully uh, it'll get you started on knowing the different views, uh, how to obtain them. Uh, most important thing is to practice doing the views um, as much as you can. Uh, and at this point, uh, uh, we'd encourage you to go forth and scan. Here are my references. I um, want to thank you again for your interest, uh, and uh, I wish you um, uh, the best of luck in the future.